All right, guys. So let's start J-Horror June, the 13th of June, which is how themes always go here. At least it's starting to halfway. And I was going to do Ringu first, but I don't feel like reading subtitles is the whole point right now. So I said, let me go with the remake first and then maybe do Ring two after this and rings i don't know about those i mean rings i don't remember being good at all like at all two is not good either so maybe i'll just do this and then go to ringu and do ringu sequels and circle back if i feel like it let, let me know if you want to hear my thoughts on ring two and rings put them in the comments because i'll gauge it that way or i'll do a poll or something but 2002 the ring by Gore Verbinski. This is a very early horror memory for me. Not as early as like, you know, my first time, like horror films, like Halloween and Friday the 13th and stuff. But this was like the one of the earliest films that I remember becoming really, really huge. Like huge. And seeing it. And I love this movie since the first time I saw it, after seeing Ringu, like years later after this, a few years after this, I still liked this better. After now, like to this day, I think Ringu is much better, just stylistically, and just, there's changes, there's, there's not that many changes, but there are. I will, however, say... It has been years since I've seen the original Ringu, so my memory is not the best of it, because I've seen this movie way, way more. So, interested to rewatch that uh, probably tomorrow. He's not good with Japanese shit. So, this is going to be fun this whole month, <laughs> talking about these movies. But Samara, the version in here, she was terrifying when I first saw this movie. So when she comes out of the TV at the end is is such an iconic scene again i don't want to compare ringu with this remake in this video that's what i'll say for ringu but looks better in ringu whatever <laughs> it still looks great but this is like the gold standard for me and for a lot of people of japanese horror remakes like when this came out this ushered in just so many more remakes of classic Japanese horror films. Obviously, The Grudge was the next big one, and Dark Water, and uh, even started spreading to other places in uh, South Korea, The Tale of Two Sisters, we got The Uninvited. He just brought in so much Japanese horror. And it's a good thing, because at least American audiences were able to experience and see these stories. But hopefully they went out and sought out the originals because mo pretty much they're all better. But this is a great remake. V Verbinski just did a great job adapting the story. The one thing about this movie that I, the cinematography and the way it looks, I don't like how green it is. And that it's kind of hypocritical because I love in the Saw movies that green filter. You saw that a lot in the early 2000s. But I just don't like it here. I don't like how everything is so green. That That's like my biggest complaint with this movie. So, I mean, that's that should say something there, how much I enjoy this, this remake and how much I love this movie. It's just, it's too green. Like, <laughs> I wish I edited, changed the, the color filter. Like, that would work so much better for me. But let's talk The Ring from 2002. You're going to die in seven days from seeing this uh, video. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> All right, this is stupid, but anybody ever... <laughs> I'm sure no, but has anyone else, at, during the DreamWorks logo of a movie with the kid on the moon, like, fishing, anyone ever wish, like, he really, like, what, landed a big-ass shark or something, pulled it up <laughs> in the middle of the logo? No, just me? All right. The whole intro scene with the, the friends... It's very good dialogue, like at, especially for like an early two thousands post scream like movie. I mean, this is for me what people say, and I'm not going on long with scream. What people say that scream revitalized horror and changed horror for, for the better is what they say. It's good for them, I agree. 
not at all, but <laughs> everyone has their own opinions. When The Ring came out and ushered in all the J- the J horror, that's when horror changed for the better for me. <laughs> like this, this movie was a big influence on horror going forward into the like mid late two thousands. So much better for me. But the girl tells the whole story about the videotape. Coincidentally, her friend she's with saw this videotape, so she gets the shit scared out of her more before she has to die. And the girl who survives, who we see later, like in the mental institution, she says that when she's telling the story, that a woman looks at you and it's like she's looking through the screen, and then you get a call and it says, you're going to die in seven days. No, it does not. And she says, seven days. That's it. <laughs> so I don't know what that's about. What if you don't have a phone? That's a big thing I've always wondered with this. What if you don't have a phone when you watch the tape? Then what? <laughs> Do you get, does the curse count? Do you have to get the call? Do you have to get the, the confirmation seven days for the curse to, to work or not? So if you watch this tape in some old cabin that doesn't have a landline and you got no cell phone, and this is the very early 2000s, so cell phones weren't that widespread, then what? Is that how you survive? They never address it. <laughs> I'm sure someone thought of it, but I don't know. Give me answers. If anyone has any idea if that would work, let me know. And then it's 10 o'clock, and that's when she's supposed to die. And Samara is late to the party because she gets to live a few minutes longer for that jump scare when it's her mom on the phone, which is kind of stupid. You know how I hate jump scares. But then the whole scene with the TV turning on with the static, and then her turning it off and leaving, and then it turns back on. and get, Great. Like, great atmosphere, great tension. You, you, first time you see this, you know some shit's going down. You don't know what. And ever since this movie, nobody, and I guess you could say Poltergeist did it first, but you look at a TV screen with static. You're either thinking of Poltergeist or you're thinking Samara's coming through the, t- the TV soon. And all the the uses of water symbolism and everything through this whole movie because of Samara's backstory with the well and how she was killed and everything. It's great. Like, all of that is used so well here. And the face, like, after she goes back upstairs and the water's there coming out of the door and she opens the door and then she dies. When they show her face, that's a terrifying face, man. <laughs> I mean, come on. You, I gotta give it that. Like, I, get, I think that the faces, the twisted, distorted faces in the remake here are better than in Ringu. That's one of the few things that I like better in the remake nowadays. It's just the, the, that'll never, that image is forever burnt into me. Like, the first time I saw this movie, seeing their twisted faces looks great. All right, let's talk about Aiden, the son in this. This kid looks dead naturally. Like, everything I've seen this actor in, <laughs> this kid actor, he looks like he's dead. Or he looks like he's he, he's a vampire. or He, he doesn't look right. <laughs> he doesn't look alive. And I, he, he, I don't know how to feel about him in this. Like, that's another thing with this one versus Ringu. That <laughs> I, just, I don't like the son here. He's too out there. Like, I can see as it goes on and he's being influenced by Samara... Kind of like a Jack Torrance in The Shining situation here. Like how I said in my video for that, that just like Jack is crazy right from the beginning. That he's ready to murder his family, he's thinking about it in the interview. It's kind of like that. This kid seems out there and just completely evil. (laughs) Even though he's not, but like he seems disturbed. Like way too disturbed off the bat. I feel like it could have been done a lot more subtle. I don't know. But it's, I have an issue with this kid. It has been a decent amount of years since I've seen uh, the original Ringu. So there might be things that are a lot closer in this that I'm forgetting. So this is going to be interesting watching this and then watching Ringu right after this. Because, like I said, even though I prefer Ringu nowadays, I know this movie so much more. Just because I've seen it so many times, so many more times than I've seen Ringu. And, I mean, Naomi Watts is another huge reason that I love this remake so much. She's so great. She's fantastic in everything. Everything I've seen Naomi Watts in, she just kills it. 
an amazing actress of her generation, man. Like the scene when Aiden is on the street and it's raining and then he sees his father, where we find out later, uh, who Naomi Watts had a relationship with and whatever. That whole scene makes no sense in the American version. If I recall correctly, like that scene has no point there. Like it doesn't make sense. I'll, I'll get into that in Ringu. Sad at the wake with the mom when Naomi Watts is talking to her. Rachel, how can you forget? Because friggin' Aiden will not call her mom. It's just a oh, Rachel over and over again. She says that she was Googling for four hours on the internet. She never found a single case of a 16-year-old's heart just stopping. I mean, I'm sure it's rare. But, like, I've heard stories of young people's heart stopping. It took her four hours searching on the internet. She didn't find any. This is early 2000s, so, I mean, the internet isn't what it is today. So, oh, this has nothing to do with anything. And this is when Rachel gets her glimpse of this juicy story she can get. That she finds out from the friends that they're all dead. The rest of them. The whole group with the girl from the beginning. Forget her name. Was it Katie or something like that? They all watched the tape. They all died. So now she is, she's on a mission. She's got to figure out what happened. Like Aiden, when he goes up into Katie's room, and then Rachel follows him up there, and he's just standing in front of the TV. Nothing's on it. It's just a shut-off TV. And he's just staring in front of it. Like, why? Like, this is the things that don't work for me here. It's just being creepy just to be creepy. Like, there's no reason for him to be standing in front of the TV like, the whole... <laughs> up to now, we know something's up with the TV. That's how the, Katie died at the beginning. So just having him stand there creepily, like, he hasn't seen the tape, he hasn't been influenced by Samara, like, nothing. So that doesn't make any sense to me. I always thought it was cool with the photos, that, like, after they've seen the tape, that all their face, like, any picture of them, their faces are, like, blurred out and distorted. That's a cool touch. And I, like... <laughs> She's at her job, and her boss comes over, and he's like, you're fired. She's like, no, I'm not. He's like, yeah, you are. She's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I wish you could just talk to your boss like that. And like I said earlier, the cinematography is great. This is a great-looking film. Again, it's just too much green. <laughs> Especially, they just showed her, like, driving to Shelter Mountain and in the wood, like, with the woods and stuff. All the green trees, they're, like, extra green. And then she watches the tape. The entire tape... The whole video is so iconic at this point. And it, it's disturbing, man. <laughs> like, seeing all the shit that she sees on this tape with severed fingers and a box and the ladder and then the, the lid of the well making the ring. And that's another thing. Let's talk about that. What a fantastic title for this movie. The Ring. The, you see the ring? No, says Samara did when she was in the well. It's also like the ring of the phone saying seven days and then it's like the you know it's a cyclical nature that the, the curse keeps on going so it just keeps on going like infinitely what a phenomenal title man <laughs> for a movie the ring perfect and then we get our classic seven days now i get he's a skeptic noah just like i would be and it's just a tape. These four kids, she says, are dead. And he says, yeah, not because of watching a tape. But it is a little coincidental <laughs> that these four kids all died after watching a tape. And now after she watched it, she got a weird phone call from someone saying she, seven days that she's going to die. I'm just saying she kind of lets him watch his tape. Like, she warns him. And he just, like, gets one rebuttal. And she goes, all right, watch it. <laughs> So it doesn't seem like she cares about, uh, cares too much whether he goes through this with her. So the phone rings and she doesn't even answer it because she's just terrified it's going to be Samar, who she doesn't even know Samar yet. But again, back to the phone thing, like, what if you had a beeper? Does that count? Like, can, could Samara beep you? <laughs> and it just says seven days and then that's it? Like, then you're cursed? I, I, I want to know the rules. So Noah doesn't even he hear the seven days because she had a, a message and she deleted it. So presumably that was Samara for him. So I guess it doesn't matter. You don't need a phone. Like, or it, whether you have one or not doesn't matter. Just seeing the tape is enough. 
and the and the curse is on <laughs> like from then on so it was fun to think about it <laughs> but i guess that's the answer there i love when they're dissecting the video too and i mean and they ex he's explaining it right there he's like all exposition in this <laughs> Like Noah, the whole character of Noah is just exposition central. But whatever, I like his character. But when they're going through the tape and he starts saying that like it's like being born without fingerprints, like we have no idea how this is made. And just ha how Samara's mom looks. And then the, the shot of the, the mirror and he's saying that there's, you should see the camera. Like it's a dead on angle and it's not there. Like I lo just love the video, man. Like what a great video. Like, how the fuck does... <laughs> This girl, Becca, the one who survived, how does she know anything about Samara? How does she know that Rachel watched the tape? How, any of that. I've never understood that. And I, again, I don't remember if it's mentioned in Ringu. But since it's stupid, I'm going to assume maybe it's not. But how does she know any of this? I've never understood that because she grabs her and she, her wrists and she sees the, the mark that Samara left on her. And she says, like, she'll show you. And how does she know this? Any of this? That makes zero sense. Always has. Hasn't. <laughs> Pulling the fly out of the tape? That's cool. Nice little touch. Oh, remember what I said earlier about it took the mom four hours searching on the internet? She couldn't find anything. I just saw, like, the, the search bar that uh, Rachel's using. Yeah, no, that internet <laughs> isn't finding anything. Never mind, I retract all that. Cool, when Noah goes, goes to the convenience store and he's looking at the security feed and his face is all distorted. But then the, this bitch, she, <laughs> this is just for the movie. This is not for anything else. When she turns and says, you're going to die. And it says, smoking kills or whatever she says. Come on, lady. Like, that's, that's what I don't like here. <laughs> like, again, I don't know if this line's in the original. I forget. But it's stupid. When Rachel drinks the water and then she's pulling the hair out, that's fucking gross, man. <laughs> that's so disgusting. Well, not the hair. It's a friggin', uh, you know, like they put on your body, like the electrodes or whatever. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie. It's gross. That's what I'm trying to say. And why does she get to see Samara, like in visions and stuff like that, before the seven days is up and she comes and kills her? Like, did the others see that see her like katie from the beginning did she see samara and have visions and shit like that before she died we never find any of that out it's not a knock or anything it's just an observation but i wonder if everybody starts seeing visions because we know that samara was able to put images and burn them into people's brains and that's what drove her mom crazy and led her to killing her is that she was projecting all this evil just crazy thoughts and images in in her head so I'm going to guess that they probably all went through this, that this is just part of the curse. Sort of like an infection that like you start seeing some symptoms and stuff, and then it progresses to the weak mark where you're dead, <laughs> like sort of like that. And then dun, 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 we find out that Aiden is Noah's son and Rachel's son. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's fine, but I just can't take it with this kid Aiden. Like, I forget the character's name in Ringu, but so so much better of a character than Aiden here. But he watched the tape. Who? Our son. So now he watched it. So now, now they really got a race against time. And Noah finally believes her because he took like 10,000 selfies and they all turned out with distorted faces. Noah, go. they go on to try to get the, the tape from uh, the records office or whatever. And the, they say no. Like, he's trying to bullshit his way in there. And then he just leaves and walks out. And then there's just an open door <laughs> that he walks into. And after all that shit that he was given, the security guard catches him and then lets him watch the tape. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Like, like this guy who's supposed to be security, it's supposed to, like, care, but then he doesn't for no reason other than the plot. The whole setting, though, the farmhouse where uh, Samara's father lives and everything, looks great. I love that whole setting. And now Aiden's drawing rings and shit like a psychotic little kid that he is, and there's a babysitter there. She doesn't notice that he's drawing all these evil-looking eyes. <laughs> and rings for the last who knows how many hours like no one pays attention to this kid not the mother not the babysitter noah no one 
In fact, his best friend may very well be Samara. I love the doctor's line when she uh, says, like, uh, on an island, like, when somebody gets a cold, everybody's cold. I like that. For some reason, I always like that line. And you really feel for Samara at certain points in this. Like, when Rachel's watching the tape at um, Samara's father's farmhouse, and you're seeing just her footage from when she was in the mental institution, and just everything she says, like, knowing that what, like, her mother did to her. I mean, yeah, she's evil, but it still makes you feel for her a bit. And I like that. It's not like she's a full-on, like, antagonist you can't sympathize with at all. Like, she was fucking murdered by her mom. Did the right thing, I mean, I guess, right? <laughs> she was driving that bitch crazy with the images she was burning in her head, but she started this whole curse by doing that, and we don't, I don't think it ever ends. But it, it is convincing, because, I mean, even her, even Rachel thinks, you know, near the end that setting her free is what's going to make it better. Uh, then I'll get to it, with Aiden, but... Yeah, she thinks that setting her free is going to, you know, let her soul live freely and finally leave, and that'll be the end of it. Uh, you know how much I I hate, like, regular jump scares. When the, um, the Samara's father and the, the thunder and the lightning light the room up when she's watching the tape and the father's in the background, that's a great jump scare. That's a jump scare. Like, well done. Uh, then when he uses the TV and electrocutes himself in the tub, great scene too. Like, all of the sequence from when she starts watching the tape until he electrocutes himself is some of my favorite parts of the movie. Then we find out that she was living in the barn with the horses. With the little, I mean, it's a cool little nest, cool little hangout. Like, what the hell is she bitching about so much? She <laughs> She's got a nice view of the horses. She's got a nice little pad. She's got a TV. She's got a music box. I mean, it's better than prison. So, I mean, come on, Samara. Like, grow a pair. And then they see the the burnt etchings into the wall of the, the tree that's back at Shelter Mountain. So they make their way back there, trying to defeat Samara once and for all. And I love where the marbles all fall and they converge on the ground. And that's how they... Move it out of the way. They find out that the well is underneath there. Great. I love this whole scene. You couldn't pay me all the money in the world to go down that well. Just saying. Okay, so another question. So why is the TV leaking water and the screws coming out and all that shit? Rachel already made the copy for Noah. Like, way early on. So she's been safe. Safe? She's been safe this entire time. She just doesn't know it. Because she didn't make the you know connection, she didn't have the revela revelation yet that making a copy s skips you in the curse. So she's fine, and no is not for like another day, right? So then why is all this happening now? Like is it because they disturbed the well? Like they opened the well, and they're so close to Samara. That's the only thing I can think of is that they're so close to you know they're right where she was killed and where her body's resting that. It's just starting to affect things around them because it can't be the curse because he's still got time to go and she's fine. So that's the only thing I can think of. Oh, you know how I can't do nails, man, in horror movies when she finds Samara's nail stuck in the we in the wall in the well. Oh, that's so gross. Uh, then she sees the, the top of the well shut and she sees the ring, but she doesn't die. So not every time... <laughs> If you see the ring, means you die. If I was in that well water, and some dead-ass girl's hair just floated up onto my arm, and then her whole body... <laughs> Dude, I would be shitting my pants over and over again. <laughs> like, I would just die of fright right then and there. That has got to be a terrifying situation to be in. And then they find out and put it together. How long could you survive down a well, you know, without food in it, seven days. And that's why you die a week after watching her video, because she's pissed that her mom killed her because she was making her nuts. I think Samara is being very overdramatic. I love, <laughs> it's the one thing from Aiden in this movie that I love. When she's laying in bed with him, she thinks everything's fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. George Carlin, so great. And 
she says to him her name, Samara. And he says, is that her name? <laughs> like, just the way he delivers that line is so funny to me. Like, he, like, he, like, it didn't matter to him, didn't occur to him, like, her name or anything. And then she says it, he's like, is that her name? <laughs> but then he goes back into stupid Aiden mode because she says that we freed her and everything's okay. And he's like, you what? You freed her? Come on, kid. You couldn't give your mom a heads up <laughs> that that wasn't the right thing to do. Oh, this kid. Like, that really annoys me, actually. Come on, this kid couldn't, you know, heads up, Ma, or, or Rachel, whatever you want to call her. Just so you know, the, the girl that's, like, I've been seeing visions of and that you're cursed by, don't let that bitch out the well, because that's that's not the right thing to do. P.S. Love ya. Aiden. <laughs> so easy to solve that problem. And then we get just the best scene for me, man. And, and as good as it is done here... I prefer I, this. I remember vividly from Ringo, <laughs> like without question, and it's so much better. It's done so much better in Ringo. I mean, like most of that movie's done over this, but like I said, this is such a great remake. Him, her coming out of the TV when Noah's getting the calls from Rachel, trying to you know warn him, and we see her just walking all just unnatural and crawling on the ground, and then her she like just stands up. <laughs> Oh, I can you imagine? Like I could not imagine seeing this with my eyes. Your face would probably probably end up just like his face. And then she finds him, freaks out, and then we get the quick shots of Katie, and uh, his face is all twisted the hell up. Looks great. And then she starts freaking out at her house, breaking the tape, and saying, "Well, like, wh why not me? What did I do? Like, what did I do?" And then she realizes that she made a copy. And you get all the little flashback dialogue and stuff of the father saying that it spreads like a sickness like you take someone's tragedy and make force the world to see it and she puts it together i made a copy and then they make aiden push it in you know the tape into uh the player and record it and make a copy for him so it skips over them and i mean that's that's got to be tough man i mean as a moral conundrum there <laughs> like could you spread this on to somebody else but that I mean, it kind of all collapses on itself here, because then all she has to do is give this to someone and say, make sure you make a goddamn copy of this thing afterwards. And then whoever you give it to, tell them to make a copy afterwards. And then that's it, right? Like, death chain letter over. Shouldn't that be the end of it? That's what I would think. But that's The Ring. <laughs> awesome, awesome movie. Like I said, this movie has a lot of nostalgia for me, too, just from seeing it and growing up with it and seeing this movie so many times. But Ringu, probably tomorrow. Yeah, probably tomorrow. But, all right, guys, I will see you guys soon. Take care, everybody.